We are nearing the completion of Kyle's Hyper Adobe Tiny Home. This is Red and April Off Grid. Join us as we install the kitchen cabinets, surface grind the concrete floor in the bathroom, and work on the shower base including installing the curdy membrane. We had the cabinets stored in a shipping container, and so we decided to pull them out and look them over to see which ones we wanted to use in Kyle's space. These cabinets were leftovers from a set of used cabinets that we purchased for our home. We went to Tucson to pick them up, and we had way more than we needed, and we saved the extras in hopes that we would be able to use them in Kyle's project, and it looks like that's going to work out fine. We're doing some measurements here to see which cabinets would fit the best. He doesn't have a lot of space here. This will be a pretty small kitchen area, and he is going to have a dishwasher, so we only have space for two cabinets. We picked out the two cabinets that were in the best condition, but they still needed quite a bit of work to rebuild some of the corners, and the base had rotted out on some of them, and so it, it won't affect the appearance of the cabinets. It's just kind of the structural thing, so I turned them upside down and started making some repairs. We enjoy reusing wherever and whenever we can, and so these cabinets were a good opportunity to do that. They have nice solid oak front faces and doors that still look quite nice. They don't even need to be refinished, just a little cleaning, and they're in excellent condition. Unfortunately, the, the subframe portion of these did have some damage, some water damage, and they're made of particle board, and so they needed a little bit of repair, but I don't mind doing that kind of stuff. I was able to piece in some additional support pieces and rebuild the corners, and these should be ready for many more years of service. These cabinets were originally installed in a bathroom, and bathroom cabinets are typically a couple of inches more shallow than a kitchen cabinet, which isn't a problem here. They can just stand out from the wall a little bit, and we can still use a standard countertop for them. But we will need to take care when we order the kitchen sink to make sure that it fits properly with these slightly smaller cabinets. I really enjoy rebuilding, restoring, reusing things, whether it's old tools or old cabinets. It's just really satisfying to do. It's also a whole lot easier than building new yourself, and a whole lot less expensive than buying new yourself. And of course, it uses less resources overall. Both of these cabinets were built with two top sliding drawers, and of course in one of them the sink will be taking up that space, and so I needed to remove the drawers and the sliding mechanisms, and remove the face so that I can put it back on later as blanks. And I'm attaching those blanks now. I just want to make sure they're positioned correctly, because when I attach them they'll be there permanently, and you know, cover up those open holes below the sink. Well, I've almost finished the prep on these cabinets. I've rebuilt the corners, rebuilt the base on them some, put the blanks in. It hasn't taken that long and they're almost ready to install. Over at the build, Kyle is mixing up a batch of stucco that April will be using. She wanted to do some touch up around the top. She's working on that transition between the soffits and the top of the wall, making sure it's smooth and drains well. On the inside, Kyle is starting the process of getting ready to move in. He's got a bed frame moved in, and he's building some shelves for the space. Meanwhile, I am over in the bathroom working on the wall for the shower. I've already drilled the holes in the concrete for the anchors, and now I'm just screwing down the board with a piece of foam in between. Next up, I'm going to install the top board along the ceiling, and then just fill in with studs as appropriate. I'm trying to make sure that this divider wall is plumb and level, even if the adobe wall that I'm attaching it to isn't perfectly so, so I'll use shims as needed to make sure that the wall is plumb. This little section of wall is also a little tricky because the roof is angled, and so that top plate 
follows the pitch of the roof or the ceiling that I'm attaching to. And that's why I'm, I put the top plate and the bottom plate in first, and then I just cut each stud to the appropriate height because each one will be different. Kyle has a couple of metal frame shelves that he put together, and now he's working on some cube units that he'll store his clothes in. Kyle is planning on a pretty simple layout to the house. Since it's a small space and he's the only one living here, he's decided to forego some of the traditional furniture like chest of drawers and that sort of thing, and instead go with shelving units and these small boxes where he can organize his possessions in a way that makes sense to him, and he can see them and access them easily. And of course it's made easier because Kyle is a fairly minimal type person. He doesn't have a lot of possessions or care a lot about things. And so he doesn't have a lot of stuff that he needs to fit in the space. We accidentally bumped a water valve and sprayed water everywhere. That's the mess you can see here. But the framing is almost done. I've got all the uprights in place and now I just need to do a little cross bracing. And now that's all finished and we're just kind of standing here thinking about the next step, which will be installing the dry pack in the shower base. And now that's all done. We put in the drain and the dry pack. We didn't get any video of it, but this creates the taper that will allow the water to run to the center and the drain is installed, so we're now ready to install the membrane. And here's a look at the furred out exterior wall and partial wall that we'll be attaching the metal shower enclosure to. And now I'm outside cleaning up my concrete tools. That was a bit of a stressful step and I'm glad to have it done. Well, we're back inside and now we're cleaning up the bathroom area and getting ready to surface grind the concrete floor. We decided to go ahead and do this while we're waiting on the dry pack to dry in the shower. The shower is a multi-day process. Each day you can do one step and then you have to wait, you know, a day or maybe even several days for that step to dry before you can proceed to the next step. So it ends up taking an hour or two each day for a week or two to finish the shower. At least that's, for me, it does. And now everything is all cleaned up and I'm hooking up my surface grinder to the vacuum cleaner. We want to make sure that I have as good a connection here as possible and that my vacuum filter is really clear so that I have good suction. I want to minimize the dust that we put into the rest of the house since it kind of gets into the pores of the floor and stuff. I want to minimize that as much as possible and make this as clean a process as we can. And so far it looks like it's working pretty good. It's not making just a ton of dust. I am still using a really good face mask for this because this dust is really bad on the lungs. I'm using a Makita 8 inch grinder for this. It has a vacuum shroud that allows you to suck that dust away and a diamond disc that's made especially for this. We bought this whole setup to do the floors in our house and it worked really well and the diamond disc is still in great shape and we're able to use it again for Kyle's. I just did a relatively quick grind on this floor. We did a little more extensive grind on our floor and it ended up being really slick. So we decided not to go quite as deep on this floor. It still looks a whole lot better and is a lot smoother, but maybe it won't be quite as slick. And now I'm ready to move on to installing the curdy membrane for the shower pan. I already have all the curdy membrane pieces cut out. I've also installed a curb and installed a piece of hardybacker board along the divider wall. I will cover the floor of the shower pan first, and that piece will go up the walls about three or four inches. So I'm applying mortar to the base area and then also going up the wall a little ways. I've already carefully cut all of my curdy pieces to the right size, and those are over there on the right, kind of waiting for me to get ready for them. Once I start applying the mortar, the clock will be ticking. It only has a certain amount of open work time, and so I have to work quickly so that it doesn't set up before I'm done. Unfortunately, before I got all of the mortar on that I needed, I realized that I didn't make enough and I'll have to make up another batch. That is particularly unfortunate since it takes about 15 minutes to make another batch. You have to mix for five minutes, let it slake for five minutes, and then mix it for another five minutes. And while you're doing all that, the first batch is drying. I think that this particular mortar has about a 45 minute open work time window. And so I'm really feeling stressed here to hurry up the process as much as I can. I've now finished applying the mortar and I'm ready to apply my first piece of membrane. This was really critical. The way I laid it down, I had to really try hard to get it in exactly the right position. It's difficult to move once you lay it down. It wants to stick along the back and it's 
difficult to peel it up and then move it. Fortunately, I think my first try was fairly successful. It was close enough and I was able to just work from there. Once it was down, I started working with a putty knife to get the bubbles out and also the excess mortar out. Kind of worked from the center out and then up the walls to get it firmly attached. Working with a radius along the wall like this is super tricky. You know, this material comes from the base and then as you try to fold it up and follow that base, you have too much material there, so you have to pleat it. And so with each pleat, I had to cut the material, remove the excess material, and then put in a little bit more mortar so that all of that would stick together. And so it was a really detailed process and I was really kind of working you know, against time to get that all done. In the end, it worked out really good and now I'm putting along the next strip. This strip was a lot easier since it was just a flat, straight piece that I was able to put along just the wall. And so it was really clean and easy and it follows that back radius along the wall and goes right down to the floor and makes a good seal against the floor piece. Doing a radius pan like this was extra difficult and a pretty intimidating project. This membrane material made it possible. It's a really neat material and as long as you get the overlaps right, you have a really good seal and something that you can have a high level of confidence in. We used the same membrane product in our bathroom shower in the master bedroom in our house and that experience really gave me the confidence to be able to do this. And actually we had enough material left over from our shower that we were able to do his entire shower pan with that leftover material. I went ahead and cut out the hole for the drain and then worked out the excess material towards the drain, got that all smooth and cleaned up, and then went back to applying the different layers. Here I'm working on the layer that will cover the curb. With this material, you can do as many layers as you want, as long as each layer overlaps the previous layer by two and a half inches. And so you just kind of keep adding layers until everything is covered, and as long as you have good overlap with mortar in between, you will get a good seal. And now I've added another strip to finish up that radius curve, and I'm getting started on the corners. I bought a kit that had four pre-made inside corners and two pre-made outside corners. Those are really nice to have. You can cut those down to size to fit whatever size corner you have. And they basically ensure a really good seal and are really easy to use. So I really like using those pre-made pieces for this. The kit that I ordered came with the corner pieces and the drain. It's a special drain that's made by Curdy that all works together. And here you can see I'm finishing up the installation of the inside corner and getting ready to apply the outside corner up over the ledge of that curb. The curb I made myself, you can buy pre-made curbs, but I find them they're pretty easy to make and so decided to make it myself and I made it out of leftover scraps of cement board. I ended up cutting five strips and glued each layer together so I kind of stacked them up with mortar in between and made a curb that was the right height. And here I am putting in the last corner and this will pretty much wrap up his shower pan. So it's a nice high quality membrane liner that goes up about 10 inches high on the side walls and should keep all the water in. Next we finished up the vent line for the drainage system and we ended up running that outside of the house through one of the portholes in the wall. That was easier than running it through the ceiling and we just run it outside and up above the eaves. We need to do that first before we can do the cabinets and so now I'm taking some measurements for the cabinets and getting ready to install those. We also finished plumbing in the water heater and we added a coat of sealant to the concrete bathroom floor that we had ground earlier. And while we were at it, we also put some wax on the earthen floor underneath where the cabinets will be. Back, uh... 
Once we brought this cabinet in, we went about making sure the spacing was right. Wanted to make sure we had plenty of room for the washer and dryer and that everything in the kitchen uh, we have plenty of room for too. So we're taking a look at that. One nice thing about it is that it's that bathroom cabinet that isn't as deep and so we had room behind it for the drainage vent which isn't in the wall since these are adobe walls. So it was nice to be able to just set that first cabinet in front of the plumbing and not have to cut holes in it and still have the spacing for the countertop be correct. The second cabinet, however, will be a bit more complicated. This one is the one that the sink will be sitting over, and so all the plumbing comes in and goes out of this cabinet. So we've got a drain line going out, a vent line going out, and also the plumbing for the hot and cold water coming in. This is always really tricky. I measure several times and lay everything out and then cut the holes, and then typically I have to take it inside and test it and then end up enlarging the hole and then test it again and enlarge the hole again. It's just really hard to get them in exactly the right place the first time. But I'm doing my best here. I'm getting the first holes in and then I'll give it a test fit. And now we're carrying it inside to try putting it in place. I did have to take some of the plumbing apart so that I could get it set down over the plumbing because we've got plumbing coming in from the wall and coming up from the floor. So anyway, we're setting this down, trying to get it over everything. April's giving me a hand, guiding everything through. And this is looking pretty close. I may have to do a little bit of trimming uh, so that I can get it level, but it's not too bad. Meanwhile, Kyle is over doing some work on the water heater setup. And I have the reciprocating saw and I'm just going to do a little bit of trimming to make it fit better. I had to trim it a couple of times to get sufficient clearance around the pipe to get the cabinet level and sitting how I wanted it. But once I did, I was ready to go ahead and shim up the cabinets and get them really well supported so that I could screw them together and then they'll be permanently in the right place. So I went and got my levels. I have a four foot level and then a big eight foot level that I'll use for this. And I'm just trying to get the cabinets square with each other and as close to true and plumb as possible. Of course, the floor isn't perfectly level and the walls aren't perfectly plumb. So it's a, it's a bit of a challenging situation here and I did need to use shims. You can see how the long level extends over to the right and on that side that there will be a dishwasher and the countertop will extend over the top of the dishwasher and a little ways past. So he'll end up having about eight feet of countertop. Finally got it level and I'm ready to attach the cabinets together. You do that by pre-drilling through the face and then using a cabinet screw through the two faces to attach the cabinets together and then a few more screws in along the back frame as well. Well that pretty much finishes up the installation. Now just a little cleanup and we'll be ready for the sink and countertop. Well, things are moving along really quickly now. I know we have a lot of loose ends, a lot of projects that we're kind of in the middle of, but we should be wrapping them all up in our next video. Thanks for following our journey. We are happy to report that the quail family is almost grown and doing well. And stay tuned to see our first rattlesnake sighting of the season.